eggplant. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning into our video training series. This lesson is all about debugging your eggplant functional scripts. In our discussion, we'll highlight significant parts of the debugging process and the great features of eggplant functional that will give you help and guidance along the way. We'll use some simple test scripts as an example and walk through some debugging strategies. Specifically, we'll discuss using the screen error image that's captured with a failed scripts execution. So let's go. As a starting point, it's relevant to ask, what is debugging and why is it important? In the context of your eggplant automation project, when we refer to debugging, we're talking about the process of identifying and resolving errors in your test scripts. Debugging is important because it ensures that your automation scripts are driving your systems and applications exactly as you want them to. In short, debugging gets us robust and reliable scripts in eggplant functional. As a best practice, we recommend crafting and carrying out a thoughtful debugging approach, and the content in this video is designed to help you do just that. A script failure is a particular type of problem that occurs during a script execution. There are many reasons for why your script might have failed, and hand in hand with this fact, there are also many different types of failures that you might encounter during a script execution. For instance, in your script, you might attempt to call a function that doesn't exist, or you might pass invalid parameters to a command. These cases are generally easy to spot and resolve because Eggplant tells you exactly what's happening. In both cases, we can locate and edit the relevant statement by pressing the Show Script button. Of course, there are more meaningful and interesting failures that occur during a script execution. In most cases, these script failures are ones in which an exception is thrown or a log error command is executed. Usually, the source of these failures turns out to be a failed image or text search. So what exactly does a script failure indicate? A central task of the debugging process is to diagnose the failures that do occur during execution. Generally, we'll want to determine whether the script failure indicates a problem with the script or a problem with the system or application under test. If there's a problem with our script, then we'll need to identify and resolve it. But if we've encountered a failure caused by our system or application under test, then we might very well have found a bug. For the rest of the video, we'll be working with a few simple eggplant functional test scripts. So let's briefly review the relevant suite and then take a look at the features of eggplant functional that will help us in the debugging process. Here's our example suite called Gmail. In the suite, there are three test scripts and one master script. We use the master script to call the test scripts in a linear or sequential fashion. As discussed in the previous video on modularization and parameterization, building up a test through multiple components allows us to sensibly automate entire workflows. In this test, we'll first launch Chrome, navigate to the Gmail login screen, and then enter our user credentials. Second, we'll send a test Gmail to our own account and validate receipt of that message. Finally, We'll log out of Gmail and close the Chrome browser. Our system under test will be a Windows 7 virtual machine. And as our test executes, I'll point out some important eggplant features that you'll likely find helpful as we get deeper into the debugging process. Let's take a closer look at the run window. The first thing to notice is that animation and tracing are enabled throughout this test execution. Animation highlights the current line of code in the script display area of the run window while the script is running. Tracing causes eggplant functional to echo information about what the script is about to execute. This usually helps us provide more context when debugging a script. A pointer here is that animations cause scripts to execute more slowly, so if you're debugging any timing issues, it makes sense to do some debugging with animation disabled. The ad hoc do box can be used to execute statements on demand, and the variable watcher can be used to monitor the value of variables, all during live execution. Image highlighting is also enabled throughout the script execution. This setting will affect the appearance of the viewer window. Specifically, we'll see orange highlights for successful image searches and green highlights for successful OCR text searches. 
One good approach to debugging is to analyze the effect that each script statement produces on your SUD. This is easy to do when running in debug mode. In debug mode, the Step Into button executes the next line of a script and then pauses. If this line calls another script or handler, the script steps into the first line of the called script or handler before pausing again. Step Over executes the next line of the script and then pauses. However, if this line calls another script or handler, that script or handler runs in its entirety, stepping over it to the next line of original script before pausing again. Step Out executes all of the remaining lines in the current script or handler and then pauses. Now let's simulate two types of script failures in our login script. First, a failed text search with the OCR, and then a failed image search. With our failed text search, we'll take a look at script results and discuss how to use the screen error image for debugging. For the sake of the example, let's assume that when Chrome launches, it incorrectly displays the Amazon homepage instead of the Google homepage. Here we see our login script fail a text search for the string Gmail. Let's take a look at the script results. The failed script execution is highlighted at the top of the results pane and details for that script execution are included at the bottom of the panel. Eggplant threw an exception when it couldn't find the text Gmail on the screen. When our script failed, Eggplant captured a screenshot of the test system's UI. This is the screen error image included in the results, and you can see a thumbnail of it on the right-hand side of the suite window. You can access a full-size view of the image by double-clicking on the screen error. In this case, if the screen error contains the text Gmail, then it's very likely that the script error indicates a script-side problem. If the screen error doesn't contain any text Gmail, then we should expect our script to fail and we should further investigate the test system or application for a potential bug. All of this also holds true for a failed image search. But with a failed image search, we also have the image doctor to assist us in the debugging process. Let's simulate our login script failing on an image search. For the sake of this example, let's say that the Chrome application doesn't launch properly, and so we'll fail the image search for the Chrome reload button. When my script fails on an image search, the image doctor appears because I have the setting Show Manual Doctor selected in the Run menu. If you want to use the image doctor, press the Stop the Clock button. If the clock runs to zero, your script will throw an image not found exception and Eggplant will save a screen error image in your results. Let's look briefly at the image doctor options. The diagnostics tab shows a variety of diagnostic searches to see what settings can be adjusted or what search types can be used in order to find the image that we're searching for. The searches don't return any positive hits because in this case there is no close match to the Chrome reload button available on the screen. The Properties tab displays the properties of the image we're searching for. If the image is not already part of a collection, the Collection tab will give you the option to create a new collection using the currently selected image. If the image is already in a collection, all of the images in that collection will show in the lower portion of the panel. Finally, the Guide tab provides helpful information for analyzing and resolving your problem. Thanks again for watching. We hope this video will help you in all your debugging efforts. Check back soon for another installment in our video training series.